This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone wherever you are. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for attending this online session on Oracle ERP Cloud, complete unified application to run your entire business by Rahul Gua. On behalf of Nepal Oracle User Group, I would like to welcome everyone and thank you. Thank Rahul for accepting our invitation for the webinar. <clears throat> uh, Rahul is a director, application solution architect at Oracle India. He has over 24 years of experience in Oracle application solution engineering, business development, service sales, architecting, implementation and project management, including prior domain experience in finance across industry. As a business solution lead for Oracle Pan India, he engages with large private sector enterprises, PSU, government bodies, utilities, ETC for solution selling of Oracle ERP. <laughs> he has global experience and has worked in the countries like USA, Denmark, Ben, Bangladesh and others. Uh, he has previously worked with PwC and IBM. Uh, as usual, I would like to humbly request everyone to stay mute till the end of the session. Uh, you may raise your question via text in the chat section anytime and we will grab them and reply at the end of the session during Q&A. And in the same way, I request everyone to fill up the feedback form. We will post a feedback form URL in the chat section window very soon. And now, without further ado, I would like to hand over control to Raul. And Raul will start with his introduction and exciting webinar. Uh, Raul, I have yeah. hand over the okay. control to you. Can you see my screen, Dilly? Hello. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, see your screen. Okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dilly, for the uh, introduction, for introducing me, and thank you uh, also, Nepal Oracle User Group. For inviting me to uh, talk about uh, a subject which is also close to my heart and uh, which is also a raging subject nowadays that is Oracle ERP Cloud. So a bit uh, small uh, brief about uh, myself as already introduced. So I, I work with the Oracle India team and uh, mainly what we do is uh, do the uh, ERP solutioning for our uh, clients across India and sometimes uh, across geographies. Uh, the solutioning of ERP uh, presently it is uh, everything is on cloud now as you see involves uh, engaging with clients, engaging with enterprise clients, engage with private sector, public sector, government clients, utilities, smart cities, etc. Whatever the manufacturing clients the entire spectrum and uh, walking the journey with them trying to make their life easier in the sense that how uh, ERP and that to uh, one which is on cloud can make their life easier can make them uh, can give them a lot of benefits as far as uh, easier decision making easier insights uh, uh, faster analysis and uh, uh, the entire supply chain and the entire mm -hmm. their business process becomes easier for the client so they can rather than spending time on IT they can spend time in engaging in their business and furthering their business prospects and profitabilities and also a reduction in operating costs so this is what uh, myself and the entire India Oracle solutioning team for ERP cloud 
keeps doing day and night. And uh, uh, again, thank you, Nepal Oracle Yugazo Group, for having me today uh, to share some thoughts on uh, what is the RP, what is the RP, Oracle ERP Cloud, how it benefits, mm -hmm. and what are the features it's had, some of the features which it's had in this short session. So we will park all your questions in, uh, and uh, give the answers um, as much as possible uh, at the last. And so, so uh, for uh, a bandwidth, uh, better bandwidth purposes, what I'll do is I'll stop my video sharing so that we have better bandwidth and continue to speak. And once at the end, I'll again uh, start myself on the video. Okay. So uh, today's today's discussion point being um, Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle ERP Cloud, and we will see through the session that why it is complete, why it is one single unified application which can run your entire business and whatever your business may be, whatever your industry may be. We will see how Oracle ERP Cloud helps you and engages your entire business to complete, to have that complete uh, entire life cycle of the business covered through Oracle ERP. Now, uh, at the outset only, I would like to run a small video and uh, set the context so that you understand what we are, uh, we understand what we are going to speak about today. So I'll just uh, try to shift to the video. Second. So what is ERP? And how can it help your business? ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. Companies have relied on it since the 90s to streamline processes and improve data visibility around finance, project management, and manufacturing. However, the cost of ownership began to climb significantly, and on-premise ERP couldn't keep up with modern security demands or technology trends. So ERP evolved to embrace the internet with new features and functionality. Enter ERP Cloud. The cloud offers a more affordable alternative for ERP because it eliminates the need for software and hardware for additional IT staff. ERP Cloud enables organizations of all sizes and across all industries to make significant cost savings, improve business insight, enhance collaboration, and increase efficiency. Oracle ERP Cloud is built for the digital age, delivering on the promise of the end to end process visibility, and speed, all at a lower cost. Yeah, so that was the short video uh, on Oracle ERP Cloud, and you saw how, uh, what Oracle is trying to do, and through the entire session, we will see how it uh, Oracle is trying to what Oracle is trying to do in terms of uh, the new age technology, the agility, the, all the investments in ERP, and how it is going to help our customers uh, uh, for a bright future of their enterprises. Mm, I hope uh, you can again all listen to me. Yeah, Raul, we can listen to you. Okay. Okay. And I again, again thank you and I again say good morning to all and thank you for joining the session. So uh, let me move on. Uh, so what is a small agenda we have to get the most value from your ERP? We'll go for a ERP small overview. We'll do a Oracle ERP cloud product overview. We'll also see why Oracle and we will also finally end with what are the business benefits that you uh, uh, can achieve by implementing Oracle ERP Cloud for your business. Now, 
what is ERP? It might be a question which has been happening or which has been coming to your mind or uh, which has been floating around for a long period of time. But as we saw in the video, that the at least the acronym is Enterprise Resource Planning that is there. But Enterprise Resource Planning, see, this name has been there for a very long time now, at least I think it is about uh, 20 years or more as far as my experience uh, number of years of my experience I've been working with ERP though through different versions But the ERP name is now there for a long period of time now as we go ahead and see through the session We will see that the ERP uh, What it comprises of has also been broken down into different uh, uh, different verticals you might say so that uh, as as science has progressed as business management has progressed people have given new acronyms and people have focused areas on uh, the entire uh, resource planning area of an enterprise but uh, overall the entire process a business goes through is encompassed in the word ERP or enterprise resource planning so though the word planning comes here enterprise resource planning but it is not only planning you will see that uh, it is all about execution also planning and execution both going hand in hand so what is enterprise resource planning it refers to a type of software that organizations use to manage their day-to-day -day business activities such as it can be accounting it can be procurement that is purchasing project management risk management and compliance supply chain operations human resources and payroll uh, manufacturing production etc etc so a complete ERP suit also includes the inter enterprise performance management which means the entire planning budgeting financial close consolidation etc a software that helps you plan budget predict and report on an organization's financial results so in in a nutshell this could be a, a a good definition of ERP. You will also find this definition if you go to oracle.com in the Oracle website. Now, if these are for any organization, you might, all you listeners, you might belong to any organization, but you must have seen in, um, uh, depending on whether you are a manufacturing organization or whether you're a service organization, uh, all these blocks, the five blocks, purchasing in stock, which is purchasing in inventory or material management, production or manufacturing, sales and marketing, which are in payroll, finance and accounts. There can be further, uh, uh, further uh, areas which might fall into one of these categories. For example, logistics. After, after you've produced a product, you will need to uh, take it, you need to transport it to your dealers, to your um, retailers, right, or warehouses, etc. So in this, all these five blocks, those will be there. But overall, any company, if it is sales, it will do purchasing and stock, or it will do only, uh, if, if it is a service company, it will you know, depend on, depending on the services which it uh, provides, it will do the sales and marketing of the service. It will have HR and payroll. It will have finance and accounts. It will not have production. That's okay. But it will have some amount of purchasing, etc. If you are a production company or a manufacturing of goods, seller of goods which you which you produce or which you manufacture, you will have the entire uh, life cycle from purchasing to stock to production to sales and marketing, HR and payroll to finance and accounts. Now, this is what uh, these are near about the business processes that encompass uh, ERP. Now, today ERP systems are critical for managing thousands of businesses of all sizes and in all industries this is very important it doesn't size does not matter you can you can be a small uh, business you can be a very large enterprise it does not matter you can be a public sector you can be an entire government business uh, it can you can be a ministry you know, it does not business uh, it does not matter size so the entire businesses can be uh, taken care by the erp systems to these companies erp is as indispensable as the electricity that keeps the lights on. This is very important that today, in today's world, without electricity, we are no, nowhere. And actually we can add internet to that also. If we do not have electricity and if we do not have internet, we are nowhere in today's world actually. Now, uh, so ERP is as indispensable as that today for businesses. 
Now, what are the business value of a normal ERP which you should expect? That is, you should have very low, uh, you should be able to lower your operational costs. How? By streamlining your business processes and using best practices, which an ERP has embedded in it. You should have been, uh, you should have improved business insight from real time information generated by reports. You should be able to collaborate better uh, from your users sharing their data together. So you should have one platform where when you're working, you should have a entire collaborative process of sharing data within the users of the ERP community rather than sitting in their silos. For example, finance and accounts, normally we have seen traditional uh, IT that finance and accounts or payroll will have will be sitting in their own island purchasing is sitting in their own line in island there's no integration between the two there's no talking between the two there's no shared reporting or shared uh, knowledge between the two or manufacturing sitting somewhere finance is sitting somewhere inventory is sitting somewhere uh, purchasing is sitting somewhere so instead of that what uh, business value erp provides it gives you the enhanced collaboration from users perspective for sharing data whether in contracts requisitions purchase order etc improving the efficiency they come because the user experience become, uh, becomes very high across the business functions consistent infrastructure from back office to front office with all business activities having the same look and feel this is important you uniform look and feel it's not that when you enter the purchasing uh, section of the erp it will have a separate look and feel when you have go to finance and accounts it will have a uh, separate look and feel that was the traditional way of looking at it but erp changed it all it brought about uniformity it brought about uh, excellent and great user experience for all the users whether you are a purchaser whether you are a finance guy whether you are a payroll guy whether you are a manufacturing guy your entry into the system and your transaction into this in the system and your reporting or analysis from the system should be uniform and that what that's what the business value uh, erp gives you now uh, and because your user experience and the design of the erps are changing and they are getting so better and better just like we use whatsapp and facebook for example they keep on changing the design so that users uh, are more attracted to using it hence your adoption rate for such erps will be much higher and you will have your risk and compliance uh, the entire risk of running a business will be much more reduced why because you have entire transparency and data integrity and also absolute financial controls we'll see how these are done and then lower management and operational costs through uniform and integrated system you have one integrated single system obviously your operational cost will be much less because you are maintaining only one single system hence your operational cost your transparency becomes high operational cost becomes low and these are some of the business values which you should expect from your erp to give now this is what um, uh, uh, a traditional look of erp should be either that the erp application should have manufacturing sales purchasing inventory projects logistics financial hr and it, it, it will have some um, every other processes you can think about also these are only some of the main things which are uh, pointed out here and what are the main uh, uh, main data that the master data which are being used by the erp they are assets they are resources they are items their suppliers customers accounting there's your chart of accounts etc now uh, as we saw that what it eliminates if you have a common data model which erp provides you will be able to eliminate the cost and complexity of multiple vendor systems because you are using one ERP, you are not getting IT from multiple vendors. For example, you are taking from somebody finance and accounts, from somebody you are uh, and developing your in house developer, uh, developers are doing, say, they are creating a payroll, from uh, somebody you are getting a manufacturing uh, or a discrete manufacturing uh, developed or a third party uh, tool. So what happens is managing multiple vendors and multiple systems which might not be integrated with each other. Rather than that, what we are uh, providing is a world-class ERP which talks together, works together, and comes out from a common and single data model and a single ERP platform. Now, the what are the other benefits as if you are doing 
a huge scalability you can have a huge scalability for your organization to meet your growth suppose you are a small industry today and in five years you become from say 100 crores to 500 crores which is a huge scale up in five years right you you are growing five times now is your uh, it system uh, enabling you to scale that to scale that growth if you go to 500 to 1000 crores, you, can you do you have the scalability uh, do you does your system allow you to scale to that level now erp does that uh, it also helps you to minimize your implementation time and cost decrease the maintenance and upgrade cost and we'll see how and finally you must remember an erp will always provide a single source of truth so this is the traditional concept an erp should be like now what we are trying to say today from oracle is that um, there's a difference between what happened yesterday as far as erp is concerned and what is happening today and the expectations so what are the technology mm -hmm. Technology expectations of people or user group or businesses which have changed from today What we need is we need Enterprise wide business processes to be covered in an ERP not only organizational It should be the entire price wide if a company only is established and uh, Works within the boundary of Nepal that is okay if he wants to go if the company wants to go beyond nepal say across the globe it is functioning right so that is he will want that company will want an erp to take care of the entire enterprise if the company is today working starting with just manufacturing tomorrow manufacturing say uh, say for example manufacturing cycles so that company tomorrow might want to shift into healthcare also or might shift into some retail business or fmcg business also so your erp should cover that entire enterprise wide business processes it should be light and easy that it should be light and easy comes from this new millennial experience that we are today like we are using this uh, uh what shall i say this net meeting this net meeting tool today that like, like go to meeting right now this is a very light and easy tool your erp should also be light and easy there should be low overhead not many people should be involved in designing or maintaining your erp so the costs are low it should be on cloud cloud is the absolute uh, new normal today there is no other way people are and particularly if you see after this coronavirus experience across the world if you read newspapers every day what happens is all the businesses are con being conducted online now when you say businesses are getting conducted online throughout the world as we are today conducting a business as i am conducting business with you and it's entirely online and the entire meeting or the say for example the net meetings like go to meeting or zoom or a google duo or google meeting or microsoft team meetings everything see it's held on cloud everything is on cloud today say for example you every day you use every moment we use whatsapp we use facebook we use twitter we use instagram do you have you ever thought when we has anybody ever thought like at least we are from it uh, maybe we understand or maybe we are a bit literate and educated we might understand what a cloud is but see any normal person um, on the street who uh, doesn't know much of a doesn't have much of education but can use a whatsapp for example does he ever bother where their whatsapp is hosted how it performs uh, so easily how can we chat how can i chat with somebody in india and somebody with nepal in seconds how can i chat with somebody in usa in seconds they're not bothered right so see the cloud is such a uh, has has a, such a huge impact without people actually knowing it so hence your erp should be on cloud you should be having continuous upgrades when i say upgrades in, uh, traditionally what happened uh, i mean on premise uh, days today also on premise is there what happens any upgrade that is any new feature upgrade takes huge number of years to do it there's a 3 to 5 years it takes uh, for a feature to be introduced into an on premise system because there's a lot of manpower required there's a lot of investment etc now if you're in cloud what happens is your uh, your investment or your uh, 
your research and development or your innovations on cloud are a regular feature because it's very easy and light to uh, to get into new technologies to implement new technologies to innovate and finally your cloud erp should be mobile when i say mobile it should be available on any device device should not matter where on which device you will be using your erp from as uh, as we said in the last uh, slide so that what does a modern erp require it should be a powerful cloud-based application it should have integrated emerging technologies what are emerging technologies which which will which we will see uh, in in some of the further um, in the uh, further part of the session we should have a partner or a vendor who understands your business this is very important that as i said that uh, an enterprise or your erp vendor should be able to cover your entire business end to end so a partner who understands your business otherwise it won't be possible who, a partner who does not understand healthcare or who does not understand automotive industry who un does not understand for example airlines industry how will he cover those business processes so your vendor should be knowledgeable you should the vendor should give you a comfortable roadmap comfortable roadmap means how you will evolve in the future easily accept accessible data data in the erp should be easily accessible it should be in your fingertips not every time you will go and write a sql query and try to find out data from uh, erp those days are over yeah, uh, data should be just like as it is available on twitter or instagram or facebook it's on should be a, a, on your fingertips and a unified and an open architecture should be behind the erp of, of a modern erp now when you transform into erp systems what you actually uh, want from the erp system that it should be more engaging and as, as i said previously it should be more mobile it should have more insights that you should have real time information or getting to best decision your executives should be able to get to the best decisions very fast and and for that reason if you want to have a faster want to uh, create or want to take a faster decision what you require is real time information and finally a system which is extremely collaborative it should be uh, your responsiveness through collaboration your all your users should have shared data they should work in collaboration and we'll see how uh, using um, uh, the chat using a chat like the whatsapp chat or the facebook chat how in context chat in the erp helps you to be helps the entire organization to be more collaborative in, in nature now all these with all these expectations what we find today is that everything what we talked about now about what a modern erp should be what modern technology should have uh, um, in an erp a single vendor etc so oracle erp is providing all that we want from an erp today or businesses want from an erp today what it is it's the world's most innovative cloud applications suite now when we say applications applications basically encompasses any business function whether it is erp whether it is supply chain management whether it's performance management whether it's human capital management or which is human resources mainly and whether it is cx see cx the word cx means customer experience which is actually the customer relationship management or the entire sales and marketing part of the erp which is now newly coined newly termed as customer experience or cx so if you see on the right hand side of the pane what you're seeing is we are uh, as i said uh, in, in the start that though it is called erp still the entire enterprise resource planning for business how to enter run the entire business but uh, be, because of evolution of um, business management and um, uh, erps also now within the erp also it has been divided into specific sections for example scm that is supply chain management right uh, for example your cx that is customer experience or with the sales and marketing part or the hcm or human capital management the hr payroll part the epm or the performance management comes with the entire planning budgeting prediction modeling financial close 
consolidation, reconciliation, etc. And the ERP finally consists of all your uh, accounting, whether it's GL, whether it's payables, receivables, cash management, assets, uh, your business, uh, your profit and loss and balance sheet finally to get it out of your ERP. And in these, what you see, this is all in one single unified data model and all integrated together functioning as if it is one system. So your, from a user perspective, you will not have any difference in the different uh, modules which you are seeing on the screen when you when a user enters whether it's erp whether it's epm etc now uh, what why it is also a differentiated a new age erp because if you see in the middle every area of erp whether it's supply chain cx etc is integrated and having embedded modern emerging technologies for example, like Internet of Things, IoT, Artificial Intelligence, AI, Adaptive Intelligence also, Machine Learning, and Blockchain. Though these are um, pretty heavy words to say nowadays, and you see them uh, floating around, a uh, lot of AI, Artificial Intelligence, etc. is happening, a lot of IoT is happening. But to give business the maximum benefit of agility of emerging technologies or how to use emerging technologies right what oracle has done has embedded these systems continuously embedding and upgrading these systems into the erp so that you if you want a blockchain uh, contract to be done from your purchasing process uh, from a purchasing perspective for example right uh, across organizations across bank you want to do a blockchain contract so you should be able to do from your purchasing system inside your erp only you should not have to get a new vendor to create a blockchain process for you it is not required it is not like in traditional business that you want a iot uh, to be created then you want some third party vendor to come and create an iot system for you and uh, integrate with your ERP. No, it is already pre-available pre with your ERP, well embedded into the system and working. Same with AI, same with machine learning, and we'll see how these can uh, improve the efficiency of your business. Now, as you see, the four pillars that if we uh, talk about that ERP, PM, supply chain management, CX, human capital management what are they what do they consist of what are the business functions or what are the functions they cover so we cover financials on the erp epm side we cover financials we cover project management we cover procurement or purchasing risk management planning financial close and reporting we cover on the human capital management everything you can talk about a life cycle of an employee that once the employee uh, in uh, comes into the uh, company even rather prior to coming into the company that is recruitment onboarding keeping him engaged during the recruitment and onboarding period etc from there once he gets into the company uh, which is when we call it the global hr or talent management once an employee joins a company uh, we do not uh, nowadays uh, through the erp system we say it is managing a talent rather than managing a human resource because human resources are we are talented so it's managing a talent then workforce how to compensate reward and giving giving them the salaries or the bonuses how do that happen and also their performance management and then finding the workforce manager how do you manage these entire workforce and also in terms of in times of corona how do you uh, trace that how they are do you, how they are doing how their health is are they facing any problem so those kind of track and trace are also built into the you know, human capital management system today in supply chain management we have the entire supply chain planning the entire manufacturing whether you are doing discrete manufacturing or process manufacturing order management means your uh, sales orders managing your sales orders and dispatching uh, your uh, products product life cycle management whether you are creating a new product or whether you are bringing bringing uh, uh, you're doing r d of a product or uh, creating a product through manufacturing 
the entire procurement, uh, whether you are uh, uh, procuring from multiple vendors, you can have as many suppliers. Uh, a big manufacturing company might have 10,000 suppliers or 20,000 suppliers. It does not matter. You have to manage those suppliers and your entire procurement cycle, how you transparently manage your suppliers handles that. Your supply chain collaboration and visibility maintenance once you have because you have your plants your assets etc you have to keep on maintaining them you have to do predictive maintenance you have to do shutdown maintenance etc then you have logistics that is your entire warehousing and transportation of your goods how you do that and the inventory management which we know inventory management has always been a very important uh, job of any business which which has stock and which has uh, production and finally the cx as i said customer experience which takes care of the entire marketing cycle the sales cycle uh, the sales cycle which includes your employees who are also involved in selling the marketing employees who are involved in marketing how they are performing how they are uh, bringing in opportunities how they are converting leads to opportunities how they are converting the opportunities to win or tracking the win or loss ratio etc so this entire cycle is also done through CX. You are, uh, what is the pricing you do to your customers? What is the quotation? How you do your quotation to your customers, your e-commerce, and also finally, if you have a product which you are going to sell to your customers, how you service that product, including their annual maintenance contract, etc., etc., their warranty management, etc. So that is what uh, your oracle cloud applications which gives you a complete journey uh, built in Oracle best practices from the last uh, from the previous slide only this is these are these are kind of uh, within the erp you can say these are the kind of verticals which take care of the specialized area within the erp and if you see the band below which is very important in this slide the platform as a service which is in short is pass and infrastructure as a service which in short is IAAS. So I must also add, which you will see in later slides, that uh, the above area, which is the ERP, PM Cloud, SCM Cloud, uh, Supply Chain Management, Human Capital, and CX Cloud, this today is called SaaS or Software as a Service. The platform or the technology that is on which this ERP stands, that is the middleware and the database, it's called platform as a service or pass and the infrastructure that is below the database and middleware that is the entire server the data center the network the storage the compute everything together is called the infrastructure as a service or in oracle terms we nowadays we call oci or oracle cloud infrastructure we will see in some of the uh, uh, future slides how they are described now if i break down in uh, the entire solution of erp into some of the major areas which so that uh, you can identi identify with the common business processes which are taken care of say for example within the erp let's talk about financials so what what does financial have it will have your financial management the entire management of your finance you, it will have the reporting and the analytics. The reporting is uh, and analytics are now uh, real time. They are not dependent on running uh, different programs to get reports. They are all real time and they are all available on real time dashboards within the system only. And different people based on their role will have different dashboards. Then what? what else finance has it has planning and budgeting which is very normal in finance it will have order capture it will have revenue and collections the entire procure to pay that is the invoicing of uh, your um, uh, goods or your services to your uh, sorry the invoicing of your goods uh, which you purchase or the services which you purchase purchase from your supplier and how you pay uh, those invoices by deducting taxes etc and accounting the payables the, the entire accounting for the assets you might have assets which will have uh, normal depreciation which will have those depreciation dates the how many years depreciation how much uh, they have uh, when they are placed in service for how many years you will run those assets the entire accounting 
uh, year to year accounting of those assets and finally the retirement uh, of those assets in between if there are location changes of their assets movement from one location to another those um, entire thing finally retirement and uh, post retirement if it has any scrap value uh, that cycle then cash and treasury management which will have your entire cash transaction bank transaction and doing your entire treasury for investments etc and travel and expense management now expense management also is very importantly it has become uh, very very light and easy to use you any expense management today in oracle uh, can be done through your mobile phone you will just suppose for example uh, a person is uh, within nepal a person who is uh, say a salesperson in kathmandu of any business he is going to say uh, any of your other area say for example pokhra to uh, say do a business development of, of a product or uh, um, selling a product uh, so he has to travel there he has to stay for two days in a hotel he has to have his food he has to have local convents and he has he has to then have his either he goes by flight or by car from Kathmandu to pokhra and then comes back all these expenses what he can continue to do is uh, i mean this is possible today that capture uh, all the receipts of the hotel bill receipt or your uh, food food bill receipt or he has coffee in a cafe that receipt or his taxi fare receipt plane fare etc uh, all he can capture on his mobile through his mobile capability of taking pictures that is the mobile camera and that mobile camera pictures can be uh, captured and sent into through this mobile connectivity to the ERP only and entire his expenses uh, will be captured and will come and sit in the ERP system. Uh, so my example why I gave is that the modern technology today is making it very efficient, very easy and faster and also see at the same time transparent for the entire business to capture right and correct data. So it also uh, from a business perspective uh, for example this kind of technology also uh, takes care of that some of the say some of the errant employees um, who might have who might try to evade some of the costs it's also that is also not possible because every cost you have to capture and uh, capture through the photograph you and the company is saying you you don't have to keep the bill with yourself and bring it back you okay if you have lost the bill also it's okay because the photo is captured right so uh, you can put it in the system uh, through these modern technologies now what are the financial foundations to do all this the common security it's a single development integration framework it's a business intelligence and that's why i said that because it's a unified business intelligence your analytics is on your fingertips and a single source of the entire financial information so a normal account payable clerk or a manager or a senior vice president or the entire uh, the ceo all will have one single source of information if a ceo wants he can drill down from his balance sheet pl account to the last journal entry level and, and also see that what that account clerk or that account payables uh, junior executive has entered into the system and the same way a junior executive or a manager as per his role can find out from the system what finally he has to provide to the ceo so all at the same time can see the data depending on their roles and accesses given to them from financial management if we move to project management uh, if the company are doing uh, project say for example there is a software company which does uh, which needs to have project management or uh, uh, say a construction company which needs to have project management because they do projects a software development project or a construction project is a project which which is developed over a period of time so they should have the budgeting and forecast capability and which is there in order to project management the entire uh, simplification and streamlining of the project cost control process uh, cost processing the project billing and revenue collection uh, uh, part 
the grants management a lot of companies who do projects uh, have uh, uh, are given grants or take grants for example an ngo an ngo uh, normally we will see that their funding comes from grants from foreign countries or within their government and all now the government will always want that for a grant say uh, somebody has given a 200 crore grant or a 500 crore grant how that entire grant is managed for a two year purpose for a particular project say the project is uh, improvement or uh, uh, improvement in a village infrastructure an identified village infrastructure housing of village uh, and 200 crore has been given by grant to a particular ngo now that is a project which will run for two years how that grant management will be done by the ngo and how the, they will report the grant the usage of the grant with transparent reporting to the uh, first to the organization which has given the grant so in the entire project management the entire uh, project management system your uh, what are the work breakdown structures uh, what are the tasks that have been defined how the tasks are progressing versus the financial progress versus the physical progress of the tasks uh, then your uh, the gantt chart uh, the effective cost methods right your task management resource management whether it's material resource whether it's human resource what are the resources that are uh, uh, applicable or what are the resources that are involved in the project how you track them and the entire uh, project resource management is very modern integrated and because you have a single uh, erp system which has got human capital management also which is embedded and integrated hence your human capital resources keep keep coming up keep coming up from your human capital management and finally you are as i said the real time analytics helps you to uh, get a better decision making capability because your insight uh, is at your fingertips from a supply chain uh, cloud perspective right if you uh, normally break down today in modern terminology the supply chain management actually covers uh, the entire a supply chain part whether you talk about the, um, uh, the innovation to or the r d part research and development to create a new product or a new service that is the ideate to commercialize we say today where you innovate where you develop where you commercialize and uh, where your innovation management your project management is required your product development is required so these are getting covered in these are the uh, the these are the modules which you see within the supply chain management and the innovate develop commercialize are the processes then the sourcing to settlement sourcing means how you are trying to source a particular raw material or a particular service or a particular product which is required either in your sales process or which is either required in your manufacturing process to sourcing and contract with the suppliers the supplier qualification management you you might have 5000 10000 suppliers or more how do you qualify them into your system so that you can interact with the suppliers on a daily basis on a transparent manner the entire purchasing process your requisition whether it's your employees can raise their own requisitions your centralized purchasing team can do their own requisition your uh, tendering process your rfp processes a yeah, supplier can get into the uh, the supplier portal and actually interact with you through a self service mode they can actually send their invoices through supplier portal and finally your accounts payable where you pay the supplier their invoices so it the, the entire process is called source to source to settle settle similarly order to cash on the account receivable side when you do order management or you have a sales order you capture the sales order you either configure it through configure it, you can do a uh, uh pricing to them to the to your customers uh, how do you fulfill those orders and then the logistics how do you send the uh, the materials or the goods or the finished goods and ship them to your destination plan to produce uh, is the the entire planning process of how you are getting into a production how you are getting into a production process is there a demand planning which you need to do uh, it, it, is there a um, uh, how do you come to know about what are the parameters of demand plan right how would you uh, plan your manufacturing process how you how would you distribute 
your manufacturing capacity based on your manufacturing capacity of different plants how would you distribute the uh, what uh, the total demand that needs to be produced the inventory and costing part of it and the entire supply chain orchestration that how the collaborative supply chain works in order to produce a particular uh, item or a particular product including the cost of the item and once your uh, once your products have been produced or once you keep on producing a product one is the maintenance of the entire uh, entire uh, assets that are involved in the supply chain so maintenance of your say for example maintenance of your plants it may be boilers it may be uh, heavy machineries right it may be turbines uh, which are which you are using for producing the service or producing the product it could be assembly line it could be conveyor belts it could be uh, air conditioning system right uh, it could be uh, water treatment plants whatever you can say coal handling plants whatever you can think of you need to maintain those plants so that they do not break down how do you do the maintenance that uh, the, from the system so uh, this is what the entire maintain to optimize which has your asset management the maintenance management again inventory is also required costing and finally you analyze how your assets are performing now in the next uh, few slides we are also breaking down the supply chain a bit into individual areas which we will see for example procurement so if you see the procurement in short uh, if you see a modern very modern complete procurement um, process will have suppliers will you negotiate with the suppliers you contract with the suppliers then you will have requisition you will requisition a product from the suppliers you will have purchase orders you will have receipts of the purchase of those materials into the system and finally based on the receipts you will or based on the grn or good receipts months etc you will match with purchase order receipts etc and do the invoicing and payments if there is tax to be deducted uh, you will deduct tax uh, depending on the taxation of the country uh, where you are working from and uh, what are the areas which we see within the purchasing which are uh, taking care of managing supply sourcing contracting purchasing settlement are the modules which are called sourcing contract supply qualification management supply portal analytics and self service procurement purchasing tables all these are taking care one after but uh, uh, all these together are taking care of the entire life cycle but for a for a user or a buyer for a, or a procurement department person or a purchasing department person it is he he will not have a feel where he is going into the system he will uh, he will uh, uniformly go easily go inside the system whether it is he is doing requisition whether he is doing contracting whether he is doing negotiation whether he is doing purchase order right he will have a uh, transparent and seamless flow Uh, one after another he will not understand that behind the scenario behind this entire uh, uh, solution which he is doing from the front end that there is so much work has been done by our tree similarly if you see plan to produce can be area which is basically planning for production planning for production and also manufacturing the goods for production and also orchestration of the manufacturing so that's a coinage is given plan to produce so if you see managing your work definition balancing your demand and supply because if you cannot balance your demand and supply how can you manage your manufacturing planning work orders po is taking all con uh, considering all the plans and work orders and create work orders and uh, purchase orders the standard cost costing and planning the dispatch the uh, which we call the entire dispatch process and the orderless completions the inspection the quality inspection checks the work order costing the whatever we have produced the work order etc how you what is the costing part of it performance and orchestration for these what we do is plan make and optimize for these what we do we have supply chain planning cloud manufacturing cloud supply chain collaboration and again the manufacturing user will not understand that there is so much behind he will have only one user interface to do everything right now this is a just an example i thought of giving you of discrete manufacturing when we both we have both discrete and process manufacturing 
Now, discrete manufacturing, for example, say uh, create, creating a, a, a product which can be always uh, which can be always traced from the product start from its raw material stage to the finished good stage. Um, uh, unlike say a chemical industry. So in discrete manufacturing, say manufacturing of cars, manufacturing of bikes, manufacturing of motorcycles, manufacturing of, of a single uh, product or a, say a laptop, manufacturing of laptop, discrete manufacturing. So you can have the entire discrete work orders defined, the lot serial genealogy, your signatures, you can have electronic signatures on them the entire operating process the integrated quality of each and every at every step that how the quality check is happening each and each and every step if you want to have contract manufacturing which means that a manufacturing business today is manufacturing goods itself and also what it is doing some products it is giving to outsource third party to do a contract manufacturing so that also can be uh, seen or that has, that business process can be adapted or implemented into your discrete manufacturing today you can have the configuration of the products available to order model you can have the dependent multi mandatory or option dependent operations multi level components the tree structure or the hierarchy or serialized structure of item definition so uh, uh, dynamically configuring the item work uh, definition etc so which uh, say a bomb bill of material creation from uh, uh, discrete manufacturing which is required right so this entire process of discreetly manufacturing your finished goods from start to finish is uh, available today with best use of modern technology inside this entire supply chain management process which is covering the discrete manufacturing part Finally, also you come to see the uh, the maintenance part. As I say, that you will have to maintain, uh, you have to plan your maintenance. You have to do the repair work of your assets, and you have to optimize the performance of the uh, of your assets so that your production process is uh, always efficient. Your production process is always cost effective because if your maintenance is good and up to the standard your production will go on unhindered and it will be also be able to do the job the manufacturing job in a very efficient and unhindered process so in order to do that what we have is the asset management the maintenance the inventory and cost management which covers the work order the managing your work areas the work centers the resources for uh, managing your uh, the, doing the maintenance part the asset definitions that what your asset is is it a plant is it a boiler is it a turbine it's a, uh, ac uh, whatever your asset may be or it's a laptop a laptop is also an asset or table chair furniture a fan everything is an asset your work definition and planning for those managing those work orders as a service repair work orders then updation and completion now after you have completed a repair or a maintenance you update and complete that work order so that the entire cost part and the entire physical movement of the work is tracked and traced and also that um, how you repaired what was the problem what was the solution of the problem everything is captured in a particular work order history and then the costing and the performance of the work order right now this is uh, in a nutshell, uh, you're tra talking about uh, it. Uh, uh, the ERP, uh, as I have uh, told you, covers the entire gamut of businesses. But I wanted to give you some of the main uh, features uh, that are there, some of the main processes that are taken care, which are the important processes a business want to be taken care of, uh, other than finance, accounting, etc. Uh, this is these are some of those. Now, then. We come to the human capital management system, which is uh, now called HCM, not your HR. So you will see the human interactions uh, are in one design, any device, one experience, the entire solution is complete. It is one platform, it is one data model, it's connected. It's a, it, it also has embedded analytics, embedded security, and the modern technology. And what it covers, if you see on the left hand side, 
as I told you that the entire life cycle of every employee or every talent is captured and in through the entire life cycle of that employee in, inside the business uh, is transparently driven day in day out and transparently captured including uh, if you see uh, his um, his workflow starting from on the left hand side if you see starting from workforce planning so every company does a plan at the start of every year mostly that how many number of resources are there today in my system human resources how many i need to recruit and what is the cost of that recruitment right this is the workforce planning uh, in which which designations i want to recruit which areas i want to recruit that is the workforce planning which you start doing your hcm system you start then you go about recruiting whether it is recruiting from uh, your known sources whether it's linkedin whether it is through uh, any other social media sources nowadays or whether it is through exams which you conduct uh, in in, uh, in a in your business or uh, you can give advertisement in newspaper or in any job portal from job portals you can have direct interaction integration with job portals uh, i also said linkedin then um, uh, you can have you can go to the businesses go to management campuses or college campuses to recruit freshers whatever may be your mode of recruitment you can you are able to do this through uh, oracle human resource erp cloud which is the uh, human capital management module then once the recruitment happens the global hr which we say the entire detail the profile of the customer uh, of the employees captured inside your system the compensation the benefits what will be his or her goals how the performance of the goals will be calibrated and also uh, captured and analyzed at the end of the year what is the career development program for that person who has come in any succession plan suppose that person is retiring or suppose that person is getting transferred or that person is getting he has resigned is going to move to another company or uh, he is uh, moving to a different role so what are your succession plan how will you how will the other person succeed uh, to what this person who is doing in his designation the entire learning and development process the work life balance not only work you should your life uh, a person should have uh, entertainments enjoyments etc not only working or not only slogging the work life balance hr help desk in every company so that one understands that what are the policies what are the leave policies for example what are the maternity leave policies what are the paternity leave policies what are the ethics and compliance right so then health and safety of your entire employees particularly in times of corona we are saying it is very important and the time and labor whether you have attendance system a biometric attendance system of or a signing attendance system how that will transfer or how that will integrate with your leave management and absence management so entire area of working of human resources whatever you can think of right uh, is available and if you see the lady is holding a tablet and doing her entire job of uh, human resources whatever so uh, there are human interfaces like desktop web mobile voice chatbot virtual reality uh, augmented reality right now these cutting edge technologies are embedded now embedded ai is also embedded the machine learning blockchain etc it's complete it is the hr is uh, uh, connected to finance payroll etc and it is the data quality privacy security it is absolutely secure employee data is extremely uh, sensitive and secured information so entire data will be always remain uh, encrypted or will always remain go through a security process always and only be available to those who have access and under, under the guidance and approval approval of management in the cx suit or in the customer relationship management suit as it was earlier called we have the entire marketing we have the entire commerce 
the entire sales cycle, the entire sales cycle from lead to close, from lead opportunity, how you execute the entire sales process and how you close a sales process and uh, what are the lessons learned from a win or loss. The entire configuration, pricing, and quotation that your salespersons will give to the prospective customers and post sales, the service part of it, how you do uh, a service of a product uh, which a customer has. Uh, whether you are doing the service on the business, uh, the company is doing service on its own, or it is mm, hired third party agents to do the service. For example, uh, let's take an example of a gas cylinder in our houses or a refrigerator in our houses or a water filter in our houses we time to time we do annual maintenance contract or time to time yearly once or twice uh, technicians come on their own and do uh, preventive maintenance or if some repair job is required we call them so the company whether suppose you're buying a product from samsung and uh, the company's person might come a technician from samsung that might be that might be in a samsung's payroll or samsung might have given a franchise to a, a nepal based company uh, who will come and do the entire servicing procedure the after doing the service through a work order etc he will have to report that what was the service that was done what was the cost involved what did the customer pay everything needs to be recorded and sent back to samsung through the third party agent so that the entire capturing of this process is uh, with the help of your uh, all the cutting edge technologies as i said uh, is done in the oracle cx platform and this is what i wanted to uh, actually tell you that from a erp perspective these are the different areas which we see today uh, um, uh, as i described from entire erp supply chain management human capital management and uh, your customer experience now if we come to again back to uh, the entire uh, why oracle perspective what happens uh, what oracle gives uh, today to uh, bring erp cloud uh, has become the number one erp cloud today why it is so and why are customers across the world adopting uh, this technology why because see it is as a single data model it provides or enables you uh, an end-to-end -end business operating model your entire organizational hierarchy you will have your segregation of duties based on whatever role you have you will have the entire employee definition as i said your data access capabilities which will provide you control and consistency across the processes right so uh, accessing a data based on your duties and responsibilities and finally your role-based reporting uh, today uh, we'll see in one or two slides later how the, uh, you can access the right information at the right time and in the way or in the form that suits your role today i might be in a role which might require different kind of uh, information than what a managing director requires right so both cannot have the same information although they are accessing the same single data model so see the beauty of the system that they can have a reporting as per their needs a real time basis a manager will have a different reporting of a, a procurement manager and a vice president will have a different kind of a reporting dashboard now as i said the real time analytics proactive analytics which give you self learning insights and also recommendations the interactive uh, a, a kind of illustration of uh, a not only just a report not only just a, a uh, just a black and white report it gives it creates the context of the report also right if you see on the right hand side you are seeing a uh, incidence or say uh, in data visualization you are seeing the airline incidents whatever number of um, uh, incidents has happened in an airline company and on the right hand side of the pane at the same time it's also contextualizing that this is we are now concentrating only in united states of america if you are talking about usa that's the highlighted area which we are talking about and that number of incidents in uh, country by say america by brazil or uh, some african countries etc etc on the left hand side you can see the different visualization of the data on 
the not typical graph it has gone beyond now uh, in bubble formation etc so whatever the latest analytics is available in the world or social or mobile that is also integrated and brought about in or the erp cloud today and if you see in the first part it is saying proactive analytics deliver self learning insights and recommendations now how 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 does recommendation happen now think about we are all i most of us are from it think about one thing or those who are not from it also what do you expect from your it or erp system can a erp or it system give you recommendation what to do it can only you can you only feed data and it only gives you reporting of those data but at the same time it can imagine it is now giving you a recommendation what what type of recommendation for example say you have 10 suppliers and uh, everybody has to be paid a certain sum a certain sum of amount by a certain period of time and it can recommend you the system can recommend you that whatever the discount you are supposed to be giving to your supplier based on their based on their their credit policy based on their supplier performance etc right based on the uh, number of days credit period etc it can recommend that because this uh, a supplier can be because of his performance can be given can be uh, given uh, immediate cash um, so that immediate payment can be done so that uh, that supplier is in a give, can give you a better discount over and above what they have quoted to you suppose a supplier has quoted to you 100 rupees uh, and he wants that period uh, he wants that payment within 30 days which is okay so after 30 days you could have paid him 100 rupees but the system can recommend you today that check with the supplier because of his credentials because of his uh, uh, because of his uh, credit history because of his supplier performance because of his name in the market and because of uh, its fund flow and cash flow richness cash richness capability of that uh, of that uh, supplier uh, what it can do is it rather can give over and above that 100 rupees bill which has given you if you pay him within the next seven days he can give you 10 percent discount or five percent discount the system will recommend not necessarily that you will take that recommendation but what you will do is immediately check with the supplier that okay you have sent 100 rupees and you can wait for 30 days but if i give you the payment within seven days will you give me five percent discount and suppose the supplier says yes so what you are gaining what the system is telling you that you are gaining that five percent so instead of paying 100 rupees you are paying the supply 95 rupees in in in, in 195 looks very short but when if you see a two crore payment a five percent recommendation or a two percent recommendation one person recommendation can have a huge impact on the company's cash flow or working capital so these are done these recommendations are done because your artificial intelligence machine learning are embedded into the system they keep on studying they keep on the machine learning and artificial intelligence keep on studying the behavior of entire business processes continuously and can do predictions based on the new knowledge the new learnings which they are having similarly uh, as i said that visual analytics now analytics is also visual today it's not only black and white analytics it's visual uh, analytics everywhere whether it's using a tablet mobile phone a pc a laptop or whatever gadget is there today you can have the entire analytics whether it's and across the erp supply chain cx it's in everywhere similar kind of analytics dashboard for everybody also if you see the dashboards are different and data driven and personalized for every different role a senior executive he will have his contextual graphics say a manager of hr he can see the number of uh, the team talent which are there for a particular uh, uh, for a particular department for an employee of a role base for a say a ap manager or a uh, ar manager he can he will see his dashboard and transactions etc like that so based on your role the analytics the data that is thrown up 
is personalized. Just to touch upon, as I was talking about the different emerging technologies that are uh, now embedded into the system, we have artificial or adaptive intelligence apps, we have in Internet of Things apps, we have blockchain, which is integrated, the hyperledger fabric, which we say in Oracle, which is integrated or embedded inside the ERP system. And also, very importantly, see, chatbots and also voice recognition systems have also become a very important uh, part of ERP. Now, uh, through a chatbot, if you have a mobile through a chatbot, you can actually um, ask the chat uh, uh, that in your ERP, that can you tell me, uh, can you tell me that what is the, how much of leave, how much of leave have I taken in this year till date? In, till uh, June 6 today and how much leave balance do I have for the next year now traditionally what we will do is we'll ask the HR person can you tell me how much my, my name is Rahul how much is my leave balance remaining because I want to take a vacation in October or November period say uh, so how should, which I should plan from today you don't need to go to a HR person you can through your mobile you can start your own company's chatbot which is uh, in the background which is being run by the erp system so you can ask the chatbot what is the leave and he will immediately give you a reply that you have this many uh, leave remaining you can take vacation or not based on if you want to take vacation say for uh, 10 days or 20 days based on that uh, he will recommend you that these are the number of days leaves which you have similarly for uh, any kind of uh, planning requirement or any kind of accounting requirement uh, imagine an accountant sitting as, at his home he can have uh, asked the chatbot that uh, say he's a uh, accounts payable executive so oh, dear chatbot can you tell me what is the account balance today uh, which is being shown in the total travel expenses or in the total my laptop purchase is totally costing how much so the chatbot can also throw up questions to you so he can ask questions like for which department are you checking uh, rahul for which um, area of operation are you checking for which line of business are you checking and it can keep on answering your questions based on your inputs this is now available in our erp from blockchain perspective, we are seeing the blockchain embedding of blockchain to create transparent and trustful contracts uh, nowadays. Uh, so the, if you want to create a procurement contract uh, so that uh, everything is uh, available to the supplier, to the bank, and also to you, three-party or four-party contract, everything can be done through the ERP, through the embedded blockchain also, if you want, right? From Internet of Things perspective, uh, say uh, your um, your plants or your plants in different areas or your manufacturing stations or your turbines, boilers in different stations have these IoT devices. Nowadays, the sensor device is fixed with those. They are emanating data. And what data they are emanating is coming and sitting inside the ERP because your IoT, because of the IoT apps which is connected. And you can see the uh, your location of your plants from the map in your ERP system, you can actually raise a pur purchase order because the IoT has given you certain amount of sensor data which says that in two days time, the heat parameter of this boiler is becoming uh, more than the tolerance of the heat parameter which should be there uh, for the boiler. So if in two days time, it in the parameters uh, go above the tolerance parameter your boiler might break down and it will hamper your production so you are immediately getting that um, message through the iot apps in your dashboard and what does the maintenance engineer do he immediately uh, gives he immediately creates a work order and from there his maintenance engineer start the maintenance of the boiler to bring down the temperature of the boiler maybe some uh, water treatment plant line which was cooling the boiler was not functioning properly 
so that iot device immediately captures that and transfers the information into your dashboard in contextual manner not just normal information of uh, just data contextualize the information that this is the boiler this is the boiler number on plant in some remote area which is not functioning which is giving you these signals so please go and do the maintenance activity hence in uh, i have a doubt uh, on yeah, apps yeah yeah uh, so the apps and uh, other technologies are uh, along with a license or do we need to take by the uh, each application or the user by okay so the license part of the user. yeah so uh, the uh, normal iot apps and adaptive intelligence blockchain chatbots for example chatbots etc they are embedded but because oracle's licensing is always user based right every the li entire licensing ma matrix is user based and suppose uh, you want to do a blockchain uh, in your contract say after you have done implementation six months hence that blockchain usage will require uh, user licensing yes uh, and there are minimum user licenses for example five or ten which one has to license for so whether it is uh, digital assistant as we say for chatbots or whether it's adaptive intelligence there are uh, within the erp license item already there are separate line items uh, there available because uh, a, a particular business might use one function might not use another function if they use one function they can buy those licenses so yes there are license uh, costs involved did i answer your question yes yes so if i want only adaptive intelligent apps so uh, i have to buy the license by user way right correct correct that's correct yeah. correct yeah. absolutely it's not that you have to buy the other entire other uh, uh, iot blockchain chatbot for that not required right so uh, thank you sir. Uh, no problem so uh, hence we uh, see that because the uh, deficiency with which one can uh, the an erp can align people and the business strategies and whatever your business strategies and whatever your people perspective are that can be aligned integrated and uh, uh, you can get that through a single data module which uh, the business data which you use to enrich your employee experience also as i was saying that if you have the ability to use a social chat a contextual social chat within your uh, erp system which enriches the employees experience see employees also one has to understand also an employee who is doing accounts payable for five years in the same system for five years continuously he might he is likely to get bored with that job in five years now that person also is looking forward uh, for his career development and if the erp can provide that to him every year or every after some certain period of time he feels an enriched experience of using the erp as uh, we said that for example he was doing the normal um, accounting payable system and suddenly he gets this adaptive intelligence into the system where he is getting different kind of recommendations from the system so his entire uh, the user experience changes his he has also got to develop himself to know how to use the system also how to interact with the system now the system is not dumb anymore the system is interacting with the individual so that 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 brings about a huge change in the way ERP or RT ERP has evolved and as you see on the left hand side pane which I have already discussed that it covers the entire gamut of operations of an enterprise can think of from an implementation perspective why it can be a faster implementation why it can be uh, your uh, uh, design why it is designed to speed your journey to the cloud because see uh, you will get a very fast return on investment why 
because the go lives are very fast nowadays because depending on the number of modules you're choosing it's given in the say the go live of three to nine months what we say is a three months go live is the shortest possible for example any business will have financials and procurement to start with or say for example financial to start with and financial hr payroll and procurement to start with it will not take for only this fun business function area to start with and, and implement in maximum three to four months in a cloud why the reason being is the issue is uh, the way it is designed today with thousands and thousands of best practices that are embedded embedded into the you know, or at the ERP today depending on your industry transformation to whichever industry you belong those industry based business practices being embedded into the system what happens is say for example procure to pay a procure to pay is a standard process that is already there in the system number one if you are a healthcare industry if you follow the system provided by oracle erp cloud there's a very fast implementation happens but an healthcare industry might have some nuances or a travel industry might have, might have different nuances or a manufacturing industry manufacturing of say fmcg item might have some different nuances for the procurement piece so only one has to work on those nuances and find out within the system which area which functionality then the functionalities have become so rich now it is and with every three months to six months upgrades if the functionality for example today is not there you're sure that is going to come in the next three or six months right what happens is your entire implementation and your return on investment has become much faster in previous times if you see an it implementation or erp implementation a normal roi would take anything between three years not less right you will not be able to see a proper balance sheet and profit and loss account it used to take so much of time now today because from the day one of your go live you are seeing as the data is entering as the minimum in data or maximum data started entering even your master data your dashboards your real time analytics are already thrown up immediately so you do not have to wait for certain period of time to get those kind of data out of the system they are already there they are they are being thrown up on the different role based dashboards so what is the erp now sitting on as might have touched upon the pass and the is part what the erp is sitting on today we now call it the oci or the oracle cloud infrastructure the oci or the the entire storage the entire physical part of it the server the data center the network the compute uh, so this or the vm the entire thing is now called oracle cloud infrastructure and it is sitting on the different data centers across the world now uh, what does it what does the oracle erp run on mainly it runs on a database middleware right today that database has become autonomous if you see absolutely on the right hand side of the pane an autonomous database which is self driving which is self securing which is self tuning which is self repairing because of the machine learning because of the artificial intelligence which is embedded inside your database today the manual intervention is hardly there manual intervention is Ma to the maximum extent reduced the database has the capability of repairing itself of uh, of patching itself if in case uh, it uh, there is a, a bug which has been detected by the database right and it is impacting a particular flow in a business process the uh, normally what happens a system administrator or a database administrator will apply the patch shut down and apply the patch here there is no shutdown the application of the patch uh, happens automatically because the customer, the computer with the uh, learning through the machine learning and the adaptive intelligence capability can find out which patch is required for which bug applies the patch and a user won't understand also that so much work is happening simultaneously in the background 
similarly in case of tuning as i said the scalability uh, in case of scalability sometimes the tuning might have a problem you don't the the system itself will tune itself depending on what kind of uh, scalability is it is seeing in a particular peak time uh, the entire uh, across the apps the user the data infrastructure there is a huge security layer inbuilt the analytics the integration you can integrate within the oracle other system or non oracle app system both suppose there are some today also some companies might have lot of systems on on premise which they will function for some time and then sunset and then later on take to cloud if you want to do that integration those web services can be called there are a huge number of apis or application programming interfaces which are available with cloud which can call those uh, uh, those business processes which are required for integration from other third party systems as uh, if you see on the right hand side this is the entire application stack from middleware data application middleware database operating system virtual machine server storage network data center now this entire stuff is held in the data center of oracle and i was as i was saying what do they provide us they provide the capability of saas saas means software as a service that is the entire erp supply chain cx hcm you know, what we saw the entire functionality of the applications which is run on the technology middleware and uh, platform uh, the technology platform middleware database uh, the java technologies the uh, uh, the integration technologies uh, that is the soa architecture etc the entire platform as a service and finally the the oci or that compute storage network uh, the entire infrastructure part on the uh, infrastructure as a service which we said or the systems part so these saas pass and oci are all held in data centers today and in every layer they are uh, secured how through role based access through global access controls through backup and redundancy as i said mi ai and ml in also to detect any cyber threat or detection prevention 24 by 7 oracle security is there whether it's maps physically managed with the camera managed with a different kind of modern technology to manage the data centers the data center man traps biometric ids etc and it is evolving every day and as we know that technology is evolving hence every day every month or every uh, quarterly with quarterly updates and uh, six monthly updates your security is also getting enriched now there might be areas as we say uh, that in saas or in the applications uh, which might need some amount of work around also today you might have a very specific uh, business process which uh, as of today uh, your oracle cloud is not giving through any feature what will you do you will do that extension through a pass feature you can do a uh, write a uh, java program uh, do an integration program or try to bring your big data or say uh, you are creating a new mobile app which your uh, cloud which your erp cloud is not giving how do you do that because along with saas you have the pass licenses also you can develop the apps you can develop the access data and test continuously quickly and access the documents externally you can create any uh, new workflow rules which is which is not there in oracle erp so for example custom rules etc and all are uh, happening parallelly to saas all are happening through called web services but from a user perspective he will not have any kind of impact in using the screens from his front end he will not understand that whether Uh, if he is going to a receivables uh, screen, that that receivables is actually also going and calling a pass service which has been written in Java in the background for a particular business process which was not there in Oracle ERP cloud today. And for him, uh, though SaaS and pass is working together in the background, for the user it will be a uniform experience. For him, it will not impact neither his bandwidth. neither the way the look and feel of the screen on which he is uh, used to work 
hence we must say today that as you need the most complete application suit from a single vendor for a single data model to cater to the entire business's processes from marketing sales service uh, uh, human resources finance supply chain manufacturing and embedded with all these technologies what it is giving you it is uh, helping you with helping you with taking away any kind of data silos you do not live in an island anymore no disconnected business flows any mission critical performance you can think of limitless scalability you can just go ahead and try to expand your business as much as possible the security is absolutely bulletproof the integration is comprehensive and as i also said that because of the evolution of emerging technologies and the next gen technologies which we are embedding embedding and embedding in oracle cloud and uh, which is being pushed which is being hosted by our autonomous database which is also evolving hence it is the most complete application suite today now not only we are saying this gartner which is the you know, analyst of all the uh, uh, erps of the world today all the software of the world today if you see uh, time and again over if you go to oracle.com and also visit our website you will see year on year year on year oracle is uh, coming in different segments oracle is uh, coming into the leader quadrant of Gartner, whether it's financial planning analysis, whether it's for mid-market and large enterprises, whether it's for transport management, uh, warehouse management, etc. Oracle is always featuring in the leader quadrant. So uh, this I'm just gave uh, two three examples of this, but there are n number of Gartner examples where you will see that we are year after year we are always finding ourselves. As Oracle ERP Cloud is finding ourselves as leaders in the Gartner Smiling Quadrant. Now, how does Oracle support your journey? How how does it do uh, 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 this kind of uh, uh, journey? Why? Because see, the most important thing one has to know is that annually, Oracle does a six billion dollars plus, more than six billion dollars plus of research and development investments in all its products. So the evolution of the oracle product or the oracle erp cloud has not been easy as it looks today as we talk about embedding modern technologies and all but there's a huge investment also annually which goes on in improving the products day in day out and as the as the number of customers keep on increasing increasing and increasing what is happening is we have something if you go to oracle website we have something called customer connect so a customer can give immediate feedback on anything he requires on anything he likes or anything he dislikes and that is immediately uh, embedded into the system within a time gap of six months so the next upgrade of three months and six months you are likely to see a particular feature which you thought of should be there in your erp system and you thought that your industry ideally should have in your ERP system so that that interaction with oracle has is has become very fast it is not that the vendor comes sells you implements and goes away it is not that because we have now the concept of customer success managers now not only the implementation we need our customers to succeed in these implementation and within those timelines and hence for every implementation oracle appoints a customer success manager who comes and interacts with you and your team uh, with your business and with your business team and sees that the implementation by anybody whoever your partner implementation may be that it reaches it, it succeeds to the level that is expected from oracle erp cloud if it doesn't also if it doesn't then what are the how are the issues that need to be resolved that uh, one customer face has been given by Oracle in the uh, name of customer success managers. We have huge number of partners, we have huge number of developers, and daily and daily the lot of patents which are being recorded. Now, what is the value proposition then? That because 
uh, of the things on the right hand side which you see which are getting managed by oracle you will have a lower total cost of ownership the integrations are easier embedded analytics as you say one of the most important thing is it is easy to deploy today it is not as hard as doing a implementation for one and a half years or one year it is easy to deploy easy to use and it should be also if your whatsapp is easy to use if your uh, facebook is easy to use it's the same uh, philosophy that is also going into the oracle erp design an improvement of design uh, with every passing of the game and whether you use the technologies today or not the emerging technology as a gentleman asked me the question about the emerging technology so it is not necessary that you are using all the emerging technologies today but am is my system future ready is my system ready to handle those innovations have i should i uh, have to go to a third party another vendor to get in future uh, those technologies which i might require uh, tomorrow no your erp cloud is future ready and every upgrade it is more and more future ready more and more embedded getting embedded with all these new technologies so if you want to use something in future you can use it if not today it is because being one business cloud platform for your entire business transformation and that's what the topic of our discussion today was that is one single complete unified business process and we can see why the saas pass and is or our oci infrastructure as a service gives you the most complete innovative because we are continuously innovation doing innovation for our customers also and proven global brand oracle is a proven global brand for for the different things it does that uh, is uh, not a question we are asking anymore and these are if you see a small look at the different cloud regions or the different cloud data centers today as we have as of as we are discussing today and the cloud data centers are increasing by the day as uh, the cloud uh, areas which are more and more required uh, in the different countries are getting covered so depending on uh, 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 which areas are having huge cloud workloads uh, uh, the cloud data centers are getting created so so in last year in 2019 and within 2019 and uh, 20 india got two data centers in october in mumbai and this year in uh, april in april may in hyderabad imagine within the lockdown also the data center started operating in hyderabad so uh, say from nepal the nearest uh, you can think of singapore you can think of india you can think of dubai you can think of china chinchion so or anywhere in the world it does not matter as i was Uh, as we always say nowadays that uh, uh, as i said in the beginning uh, that do i care where the whatsapp that i that i use where the data center is i don't care but sometimes what happens there are regulatory requirements for example a bank uh, it might say no my uh, central bank or my central policy is still saying that i can operate either data centers from my own country or maybe within the vicinity of my own country for example nepal a particular uh, rule might say that no your bank or your business should have a data center within um, uh, certain countries whether it's china whether it's singapore whether it's india whether it's dubai whatever if if it is not available in nepal for example right um, or uh, if there is no rule uh, or there is no policy then uh, it it should not matter from where whether your data center is coming from usa or whether it's from australia or uh, sao paulo it does not matter or london it does not matter right so but the what uh, i am trying to say is that there's so many number of data centers and increasing also by the day uh, that is because the workloads in cloud are hugely increasing day and by day they are, are hugely increasing the oracle erp cloud is also hugely increasing day in day out so finally if you see what are some of the benefits of oracle cloud erp now 
uh, we have been talking about all these through the entire session i've talked about the uh, what uh, it does and hence what are the business benefits if we see in short uh, if you see this is what oracle.com also says that you can act on better insights you can increase the agility or the speed how to optimize your revenue cash flows uh, to ensure continuous operations you can collaborate more effectively within the organization and also across your suppliers and customers you can innovate really faster see uh, you should have uh, like for example we have sold oracle erp cloud to some of the startups uh, and i can give you an example if i name say ola cabs in india uh, the ola cabs right for example uh, or uber for international or any other uh, uh, many uh, small startups which have got into oracle erp cloud why the reason being if you see the startups are innovating daily forget about month or forget about uh, uh, yearly or six monthly or half yearly or in three months they have to innovate daily in order to remain competitive in order to be relevant to their customers if you see uh, app cab for example ola is app cab uh, in india and elsewhere so if you see that app cab the app through which you book your uh, taxi the app taxi has to undergo change every day so when suddenly the covid lockdown came uh, it had to change the app uh, user interface and tell the customers immediately that what are the risks the what are the methodology of getting into a taxi now so a taxi when you get into app cab ola cab today you, you you will have to go through a sanitization process there's a sanitization first you have to sign you have to wear a mask with without wearing a mask your ola cab will not be available to you it will not take you right so so those innovations immediately those changes also need to be done to the app because the driver is dependent on the app the customer is dependent on the app the entire company is dependent on it. so their startups innovations is much faster and if your back end erp or your entire erp is not able to catch up with it you cannot innovate faster you cannot you cannot have those scales of business you cannot be a very agile business if your underlying it system underlying erp is also not as fast as you so you need to innovate faster and automate more more and more automation less and less of manual intervention is what the erp oracle cloud is aiming for and some of the examples i've given some of the more examples some of the basic examples can be uh, optical character recognition of an invoice say suppliers can uh, send an invoice through uh, email for example and the, or uh, if they are sent by fax or some any other way come by post the post the invoice does not require is not required to be entered manually it can be scanned and the image uh, through the ocr recognition can read the data and automatically enter the data through batch processes in your invoicing system which can then go through the approval and payment process automatically only the manual intervention might be your approval process of the invoice otherwise all the data of the invoice is not required to be put in manually it can do be done through ocr recognition system which is there embedded within the oracle erp ap package now uh, now that approval system also the approval of the invoice can be done by the approver by the executive on his mobile also he does not have to open go to his office and open his machine and sit down and go inside it, it's not required he will get a notif notification on his mobile through his erp access and he can do the approval or rejection of that payment process and once he does that the payment process is also automatic it goes through the rtgs or the neft process through the banks so the automation is also more so these are the benefits of oracle erp cloud today and with this i actually uh, come to the end of the session i think i have taken a hugely long time and i hope uh, and i am so uh, appreciate your patience with me that you have uh, been there you have listened and because this has been a 
pretty long session. I thought it would be short, but it has, I've been speaking for a long time. So uh, you might have got bored. But at this point of time, uh, you can uh, ask the questions or if you have questions, you can take some of them. Thank you. Uh, uh, I guess someone is trying to ask a question. Is it true? Uh, so, yes. So, so we know that uh, all the modules are not that fully uh, developed. Uh, so when we can expect uh, the fully developed uh, complete ERP fusion uh, application because uh, some engineering process manufacturing uh, applications are not that uh, uh, fully equipped. So when you say process manufacturing, right, you will get the module is available today. Now, when you say process manufacturing today to do a say a chemical engineering model, though I showed this screen, uh, the process manufacturing module is there since last two years now, and it has got developed to a certain extent and is also developing like any other module. It's also getting on upgrading and developing. So, if you start with say a paint industry or a chemical industry or a, a any industry that uses formula and recipe for process manufacturing. You can start with that today itself. That is not an issue anymore. Yes, uh, one or two, one or two uh, additional features for a process uh, uh, for wherever there are, uh, say, uh, co-products, etc., which you want to sell uh, to the, the to the outside world along with your main products. Those are also getting uh, those features are coming within the uh, next three to six months. But what i want to say is that we are we have already uh, uh, started implementing process um, uh, process industry modules or process manufacturing modules have already started getting implemented since last two years which was not there as you rightly said which was not there previous to about uh, uh, two years back okay so it uh, is there and uh, it hmm? is not fully Where? come again Uh, Kumar, can you please ask again? Yes, sir, I will. Uh, uh, I got the answer. So, yeah. so I said few industries uh, 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 is complaining about the uh, it is uh, many modules are not fully equipped or the features are not uh, available when it compared to ERP. EBS uh, system. So, is it true mm -hmm. or it is fully developed or some developments are going on? No, see, uh, the entire architecture and entire uh, way of doing EBS, as we have, as I have also evolved from EBS only. So, the entire thing is different. Now, EBS has gone up to a certain level and is now. Um, has reached a certain level and it is there today. People are using it to the extent people are using it, they are using it. But that is the end of it. Now, what is the next step to EBS? It is you are taking the EBS to Oracle Cloud. Now, the, all the features and functionalities which were there in EBS are anyway, anyway, they are there, of, or if they are, for example, if they are not, not there today, anyway, they are getting important, incorporated. But that is not the issue. We are not comparing with EBS. If you see Oracle Cloud is not getting compared with EBS. Why? Because the way of doing business, way of those features only have got much more enriched in Oracle Cloud. So to answer your question, uh, one is the entire Oracle Cloud is having most of the, if you say compared to com uh, Apple to Apple comparison, which we do not actually, but still, most of the features are there if something is not there which you can say that this particular x feature is not there it can it may not come in, 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 in as a similar feature as in ebs it will come say within three to six months in the next upgrade in a different way and the entire working is totally changing how your user interface etc is totally changing in Oracle cloud so uh, uh, so in summary is that most of the customers who are going from Oracle Cloud, who are using Oracle EBS to Oracle Cloud today, most of them are checking that, that today, okay, fine. We are 
doing these, 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 these things in EBS today. We also have some of the customizations which have been built over the years. Can we take them to the cloud? Yes, because the number of features are much more. And if something is not there sometimes, it, it could be. That is also getting taken care of because the upgrade process, unlike EBS, which used to take three to five years to upgrade. Now the upgrade process is quarterly every quarter there is an upgrade hence the upgrade time is also reduced the new feature introduction or coverage of feature reduction of time has also improved right so the so in summary we can safely say that uh, uh, that oracle erp cloud is today meeting most or maximum of the requirements of every business process Okay, uh, Rahul, we have a we have one attendees who is asking about the compatibility browser compatibility issue. And mm. as per her, uh, she is using right now using Internet Explorer, and sometimes she uses Firefox earlier version means older version of Firefox that is fifty two point nine point zero. So uh, she felt like there is a lot of browser compatibility issue. Is it true? But is, 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 is she, but is she using ERP cloud? Yep. Nope. It's a it's a basic ERP. Okay. So see, we are today talking about uh, ERP cloud. We are not talking mm -hmm. about EBS. So mm -hmm. uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, uh, see, see, uh, she will find the answer in support.oracle.com. Because uh, in uh, usage of Firefox and Google Chrome, etc., uh, the the there is more movement of the browser capabilities um, using uh, the usage of browser capabilities moving more towards from Internet Explorer towards uh, more usage of Google Chrome, Firefox, etc., or say in Apple uh, Safari in Apple, etc. But uh, the issue is uh, if she is facing a problem in her present uh, compatibility of her present Internet Explorer uh, with her present EBS, I think she is using EBS system, if not Oracle Cloud, then um, uh, those answers are there. The exact compatibility answers are there in support.oracle.com. She will okay. find those answers. Okay, there we have another attendee, Prabhas, and he is asking about the chatbot integration. Uh, so, does the chatbot can be integrated to Nepali Unicode font? Yes. So, the language is uh, it's a multi-language mm -hmm. or national language system. Language is not an issue at all today, uh -huh. right? So, you can uh, across the world, whatever the languages are. The chatbot, though it it will fetch the uh, uh, it will fetch the data in English. Okay, suppose you are in asking in Nepali uh, language that how much of leave balance do I have, right? So if you have set 20 days of leave balance, the answer the chatbot will give is in 20. Okay, but the question and answer and the question and what the chatbot will also ask can be converted into nepali language okay so the is chatbot integration with erp system free do we need separate license for it so the basic chatbot comes embedded within the erp system but in order to use it in order to use it there is a separate line item in the price list one has to buy that line item for the minimum number of users for example 10 users 5 users So guys, uh, do you have any questions? If there is any questions left, then just type it in our chat window. Otherwise, we will wrap wrap it up because we are already two hours. Yeah, I think I took a very long time. Yeah, no, no problem at all because it's it's a very informative. Because uh, honestly speaking, we are not aware about this ERP and all these middleware products, and uh, we have very limited idea about it 
we know about the database back end database oracle database right. and we right. honestly speaking we are very much we we have very limited idea about the middlewares oracle have uh, we use web logic very least right. and we have a very few erp deployed in our in Nep in organization in nepal so wow. this in, this uh, this session is very very informative and very helpful for us to determine us because yeah. once the business grows the everything grows right it's a uh, yeah, economy true. of the country grows and everything grows so and i'm so also business is the happy. i'm mm -hmm. also very happy that, that you called me in to share information about erp with you today to create the mind share for Oracle ERP, etc., and uh, to understand what application ERPs of the world uh, like Oracle can offer to you so that businesses in Nepal can also start up uh, very fast yeah. you know, because there will be not a lot of new businesses coming up, right? They can immediately start up. With I remember, uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not very sure, but a uh, very long time back, the uh, enterprise uh, business uh, or EBS day is uh, I think might be there was a company called Himal Cement right um, yeah we do have yeah I think probably they had used EBS long time back and uh, Rahul we have a one last question from Suruji yeah, sure. and so she is asking can we do bulk SS tra transfer from one OU to another when customer are splitting yeah suppose uh, if you want that uh, uh, one ou has a certain uh, huge number of assets say 10000 assets defined and you want the transfer of assets from um, one operating unit to another operating unit uh, in the erp cloud yes you can you know, if your op operating unit is defined and it is your asset definition is done, uh, your master data informations are created. All the asset definition or the EA, uh, can be uh, uh, taken away, taken off through mass transfer. Organization transfer can be done. Yes. Okay. Thank Whether you. it's from third-party integration, also that can be done through mass additions. Okay. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, we we if you are interested more on the ERP, then just uh, fit, uh, just fill up the feedback form, uh, post your comments and all these details, and definitely we will reach to Rahul again and for the more details about the ERP and its integration in the future, right? So yeah, basically because the data and its management is the crucial in this era because everything is the data, and so. Uh, definitely ERP is the best product to manage the organization and all this stuff. Uh, okay, thank you Rahul. Thank you for your wonderful session. We have learned a lot from it and we Thanks, hope Rahul. to continue. We, we hope to continue this collaboration in coming future also and definitely we will learn a lot from you in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, Dili and thank you so much Roman and thank you to all the participants for attending the session and thank you to nepal uh, or to user group for inviting me and giving this opportunity to share information to share, share some insights about our clear cloud with you today thank you so much thank, thank, you, thank you everyone you thank, you. thank you thank you have bye. a wonderful weekend bye, bye. thank you bye